three months. No, or even reverse the shoes, year. right? Imagine yourself currently if you're a tenant and you're renting, right? Now at the end of the year, you're not just throwing that money away. You're seeing at the end of every year, you're actually saving 13 grand just by paying off your own mortgage. You're tuned in to Boardwalk Talks with Monopoly Group Toronto, where we give you the latest news, tips, and tricks all about real estate investing so that you too can climb the property ladder. Visit us at torontomonopoly.ca. Hey everyone, welcome to episode number eight of the Boardwalk Talks with your host Kenneth Yim and Jonathan Wong. Hey Jonathan. Hey, what's going on, Kim? Don't worry, I'm not getting ready for a mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, man. Um, so, hey, by the way, congratulations on your deal last night. It's really amazing. Thanks, you did a Thanks man. Multiple offer situation. Yeah, so uh, my clients were a mother and father. Um, I guess you could say they're sort of uh, being investors in the situation, but what they're really doing is just looking out for their son, who's 12 years old. Um, their main concern was, you know, future affordability. Um, they they understand there's a widening gap between income and affordability in the Toronto real estate market. And, you know, in the future, what if their son is uh, unable to afford something for himself? And you know, they just, they just want to be able to rest that night knowing that if their son needs help in the future, that they can, you know, they can do so. They can help him out. That's amazing. How old was their son? I, I, the, the son's 12. The son's 12. So uh, obviously he's not going to go live in it at the moment, but in the future, if he does need help, if he goes to U of T, um, it's perfect for him. Okay. So, uh, you know, we've been telling our clients lately that if you have a toddler or a kid between the ages of zero to five, that you should be buying an investment property right away for them. Right? Because, uh, you know, your clients at the end of the day, they, uh, they start a little bit later. He's, he's what, 12 now. So by the time it's done in 25 years, it'll be 37. Am I doing the math right? 25, 30, 37. Yeah, he'll be 37 by the time they have uh, the mortgage paid off, right? If they don't accelerate the payments and all that. But if they don't, um, by the time he's 37, that'll definitely help them with the, the you know, the first purchase of their own home. Right? Yeah, they could, they could actually trade up in the future, right? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <you> know. <laughs> we should always put that in like the intro because I don't even think people know what that means. <laughs> yeah. But I should have a picture of like Shia LaBeouf on the side or something. <laughs> Yeah, no. We, we always say it's it's important to uh, buy an investment property immediately when when you have a kid because essentially I know it's gonna be tough when you have a kid, but it's gonna be even tougher when you gotta pay for the tuition, you gotta pay help them out with the first car, you gotta help them out with you know a down payment of their home because now it is so hard to buy something and um, even investment property for that matter. Or let's say they want to tour around the world for six months in Europe after they um, graduate from school. So it hits on the four pillars of wealth generation that we keep talking about every single uh, topic almost pretty much. And what are they, John? I'm just testing you right now. No, oh, he's always throwing quizzes at me. Cash, cash flow month to month, appreciation on the home. And then of course, equity or mortgage pay down. And lastly, Ken, I'm gonna throw it back at your face. <laughs> it's tax benefits. So uh, the, there's great tax advantages of owning real estate. So if you sell a property, you're only going to get taxed of half of the gain towards your income. So let's say you make a hundred thousand, really 50% of that will be applied towards your uh, income, which means if you're even at the highest bracket, you're looking at about half of that. So you'd be really taxed on 25,000 of a hundred thousand dollar gain, which if you're going to sell any kind of any, anything, you do anything, you start a business or whatever, um, you'll get taxed on the full hundred percent as your income. So really get taxed 50,000, I guess at the highest bracket. But then there's also things that you get to do such as depreciate your property. If you write off depreciation, you can write your rental income pretty much down to zero. The only thing is you have to recapture that later on, but whatever, there's still that benefit. And then also, what any you, kind of sorry, sorry, Ken, what do you mean? What do you mean by depreciation? Like wear and tear on the home? Yeah, for sure. So oh, there's a certain, sorry. That's right. There's a certain, uh, I'm not an accountant, so check with your accountant, but there's a, as I understand it, you can amortize the, the asset value down to zero. Um, I think over 25 years or I don't even know what the, the percentage is, but you can basically write down the appreciation. So you're, you're, say you buy something for 500,000, um, next year it's worth 490 because it's gone down wear and tear the year after that 480, 470. And, and pretty much write off the income, right? So you write off $10,000, which will potentially be the income on your on your rental. Yeah, I think a good number, like a rule of thumb number was between five to 10%, right? Maybe you're right, you're probably right. Roughly 5%, yeah. 
You're probably right. You're actually right. So I, like, I don't remember my accountant does that all for me. He's, he's amazing. Andrew Koo, if you talk to him. Um, anyway, so yeah. And then the other thing is that you get to uh, write off, you get to deduct expenses. So if you want to do any kind of upgrades to your property investments, some capital investments, such as, you know, a new washroom or a new kitchen, then you get to do that with pre-tax dollars on the rental income that is. You get to write off that rental income against the uh, improvements that you make. So number fourth benefit but let me reiterate the the one two and three again the cash flow so when you have uh when your mortgage is paid off you get free flow cash flow that's great and a lot of people think that negative cash flow if um we did a video a little while ago with uh with carol but if you do negative cash flow you're not losing on the property you're still gaining on equity right as long as the income that you get from the rental is covering your your maintenance fees your taxes and your uh interest on the loan you're still winning Right. So um, yeah. at the, the second pillar we were talking about was the equity growth. So, like I say, if you have a, a, a toddler, you know, by the, if you put a 25 year amortization on a, on a mortgage by 25 years, if you do nothing else but just pay that mortgage, then you know for sure you're going to have a paid off property. And what can your clients do? How much is the purchase price of that condo you won last night? Yeah, the purchase price was 530. Okay. So imagine you have $530,000 in your pocket right now. What would you do? Right, I buy property, hundred percent. Well, I, I framed that wrong. <laughs> I mean, what I mean is that if you had a paid-off property worth five hundred thirty thousand dollars today, because you made a decision twenty-five years ago to to buy something and just rent it out, right? Mm -hmm. What could that do? What would I do with it? Yeah, five hundred thousand cash, five hundred thirty thousand dollars cash. Well, I definitely I wouldn't sell it. Uh, for Ken and I, our, our our beliefs is always a long game, right? So we we'll always buy and hold that we're firm believers of that. But what I would do is continually have it rented out, try to refinance it or get a home equity line of credit. And then now, now that that property's paid off, let's put it on a second property or a third property and then play that game over again. That's right. Stretch it out all the way, right? Because then the best thing is the, the third pillar is the appreciation and everyone's looking towards that, right? So in the past little while, it's been 10% price growth. And actually, let me show you a quick uh, sheet about that. So we have an image here somewhere. Yeah. So, okay, here we go. Um, a nice image on price appreciation over the past five years, right? In all home types. So the red one, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's the average price on all condos. Right now it's 692,000. And uh, before the drop, it was actually 638,000. So that's April, 2017 of the Fairness Fair Housing Plan. So um, from April, 2017, when the Liberals announced the Fair Housing Plan, uh, everything else in the market dropped. But for whatever reason, condos just you know, they dropped as well too for a good, what, six months or so. Um, at the peak, it was $638,532, $638,000. Um, it dropped down to under $600,000 on average price. And then now it's gone up 8.5% up to $692,779 on average price for a downtown condo in Toronto, which is nuts. Everyone counts on appreciation, right? And, uh, you know, at some point that's not going to last forever, but so far, you know, at the very minimum, it, it should go up the price of inflation. I so mean, imagine, yeah, following inflation, just general expenses year to year go up. And then with increasing uh, minimum wage and salaries, everything has to go up, right? On a numbers standpoint. For sure. Okay, so um, anyway, those are the four wealth generator pillars of income in, in Toronto. And uh, let's walk through a specific example. I want to show you something from um, the recent launch of Line 5 Condos. So can you guys see the screen? I don't know if anybody can see this or not. But yeah, it's working. I see it. So we have a, uh, a recent project that just got launched. 673900 was a purchase price. Um, we're going to estimate taxes about $3,500 a month. It might go up by the time it's built in 2022. Maintenance fee is 58 cents a square foot. So you're looking at $376 a month. Um, you got to pay for land transfer taxes when you close. And there are some levies as well too on closing. So you're looking at what, close to 30 grand? On closing, which is like a hidden cost, but um, let's not factor that in right now. So, if you look at a 2.7% interest rate uh, for 30 year amortization, you're looking at okay, so yeah, right now we're looking at a 2.7% um, interest rate, which is variable minus uh, sorry, the, the bank prime minus one 
on a variable rate for a 30 year amortization, your mortgage is going to probably cost you about $2,100 a month, close to $2,200 a month. Now, after you add in taxes and fees of $668, you're looking at a total monthly payment of $2,854, which for a two bedroom at Young and Eglinton, um, it looks like it's renting out for on average $3,052 for an average lease. Now that probably includes parking. This one doesn't include parking, but if you rent it out, um, let's just to be safe at, well, actually, no, let's talk about $3,000. And that's today's dollars because rent will probably go up in, um, in, in five years by quite a bit, right? They're projecting the rate to be $5 a square foot. Right now it's about 375 a square foot. So I think over here for our calculation, we put 462 a square foot on 649 a square foot, which will bring you $3,000. Your monthly cash flow, you'd be positive $145. If you change that number to a 25 year M, you're looking at uh, just under uh, break even. So you'll be losing money, but I think it's like something like $80 a month you'd be putting in there. But then, um, just for the example, if you do 30 year amortization, after five years of equity growth, you'd be paying down $62,000 of your mortgage. 62,000. So every year, that's what, like 13,000 a year, 12,000 a year, something like that? That's really sweet, just by having a tenant in there. That's awesome. Yeah, just by doing nothing, just by paying your mortgage and your tenant will carry it. Um, you might have to kick in, a, actually no, in this example for 30, 30 years, uh, you have $145 extra a month, which you can use to accelerate your payments or you can use just to spend on a fancy dinner once a month, right? Which is awesome. So, and they'll be paying $12,000 of your income, uh, sorry, of your mortgage every month. No, or even reverse the shoes, year. right? Imagine yourself currently if you're a tenant and you're renting, right? Now at the end of the year, you're not just throwing that money away. You're seeing at the end of every year, you're actually saving 13 grand just by paying off your own mortgage. Right, a lot of people don't think that. And then also there's so much benefits for owning as well too. So you get, you get to really, um, you know, change the hardwood floor if you want to, or you can you can put pictures on the walls. You don't have to worry about it. You can have a pet in there and your landlord won't be breathing down your back. And especially if a landlord wants to sell, you don't have that issue, right? You know, your rent payments are kind of fixed as well too, which would be nice. Yeah, you can't, I guess you can't put a real price on control, right? Freedom yeah. of what you want to do with your home. Yeah, so it just makes sense. And, uh, you know, but I guess at the end of the day, it's the down payment, right? Who's going to come up with, who's going to be able to come up with 134000 135000 for the deposit plus another 30000 for the uh, for the closing costs. So you're looking at what, $165,000 that most people don't have just access to, which is why pre-construction is such a great opportunity because you have time to make those payments. Yeah, you get to stagger those payments over a year and a half, usually, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it just makes sense to buy, uh, to invest, buy something for your kids now, because in 30 years, it'll be paid off. It'll be completely paid off. You get some cash flow, do it again, and uh, escape the rat race. Or you know what, at least just use it to complement your financial plan if you're not actually doing it to escape the rat race. Uh, I think we forgot to talk about the uh, quarter three rent reports though, no? Oh yeah, let's show you that. Should we just jump into that right now, just keep going? Sure, sure, sure. So Q3 rent report, um, the average price of a one bedroom in all of Toronto is 1976 a month, which is pretty crazy, right? And- It's highlight uh, the uh, crazy areas that we work in downtown Toronto. Well, before we do that, the year over year growth from Q3 of 2017, it went up almost 10% for a one bedroom, 9.5%. Overall, all leases, all bedroom types in all of Toronto and York region, I think. Yeah, York region as well too, went up 5.8%. That's crazy. I remember back like four years ago when I was in school and I was renting a condo, just four years ago, it was like 1700 bucks a month. And now it's like almost, what, 2300? Yeah, that's nuts. The right? exact numbers, yeah. Well, I mean, it just goes to show the strength of Toronto and the, uh, the craziness of the market, right, of, of how wonderful this place is to live you know there's so much going on in downtown right so downtown we're looking at there's two districts there's co1 and co8 so co1 is basically um between dufferin to to young south of bluer and uh, co8 is the same side from young to dvp but south of bluer so really the core of downtown uh and those numbers are around 2300 almost 2400 dollars a month for uh renting an average one bedroom in toronto 
two bedroom is even more crazy. It's 3,300, 3,331, and uh, 3,250 in COA. I mean, I guess if you have uh, a roommate, it's not too bad, right? So if you're looking at 30, $3,300 a month, split that in two, you're looking at what, 1650 a month? Yeah. So, and, and it's funny, every time you talk about, um, you know, you watch a movie about New York, everyone talks about, and you talk to anybody in New York, not even movies, just like you talk to somebody, they're always like, rent is part of their vocabulary. And not even rent, roommates. As a grown person, you have a roommate. You know, not to knock any yeah. roommates, but yeah, especially in New York, right? I, I believe the saying is like owning is pretty much out of the question. To be able to rent in Manhattan is itself a privilege. <laughs> so um, I think Toronto's getting there. We're we're almost there. To be honest with you, certainly, certainly. And you know what? Some of you guys might have this thing about okay, yeah. Well, what if I buy and interest rates go up because you know you're hearing the news that it just went up a quarter point and all this kind of stuff. Well, first of all, the banks have to bring that rate back to you. The Bank Canada rate went up that high, but it doesn't mean that the banks are gonna start giving you that rate, right? They probably will. But even if it goes up a quarter point on $100,000, you're only making, it's only what, $13 um, a month extra that you'd be paying. Yeah. In a typical $400,000 mortgage, you're looking at, um, it's not really typical, but for, for a small condo, 400,000, you're looking at about 50 bucks a month, right? Increase. And you can solve that by going fixed or, you know, you can stretch out the amortization and all that. Um, but in the day, it's not that bad. Don't get freaked yeah. out. I mean, like, also at the end of the day, like, yeah, they're going to spike the interest rates. So what, what are you going to do about it? You just want to sit, sit by the sidelines and just keep renting? I mean, they... Well, that's it, right? I mean, if, if the cost of borrowing is higher and it costs the landlord more money to own the place, Guess what? You're going to be paying that as a tenant and you'll never be able to move. Ha ha ha. Yeah. If you guys have to check out our real estate summer, thanks to all those who attended, you know, we, all we just trying to recommend is just get started. That was, that was the main message. What we're trying to tell you guys, just get started. All right. Sounds good. Well, with that, I mean, I think, uh, everyone's heard us enough and, um, any last final words, John? Just get started. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> All right. Take care. See you guys next week. See you guys. Bye. Just do it. If you like what you just watched, don't forget to click to subscribe. We're on Apple iTunes and YouTube as well. And visit us at www.torontomonopoly.ca. Thanks for watching.